Okay, as promised in class for the first section, um, uh, this is a, a video on what we did in class. Uh, mainly, uh, when you're in a test or in a quiz, how do you, how can you sort of brute force the answer as to figure out what a program does? Um, it, really, this is this is a case where if you um, have a program in the real world and you're really at your computer and you really have DevC or um, uh, Xcode in uh, your Mac, you can just put a, a printf statement anywhere you want, inside a loop, outside a loop, and sort of diagnose what's going on in there. I haven't, what I haven't taught you is debuggers, right? And so there are actual debuggers that also track variables throughout the pro, throughout a program and can tell you what the variable uh, value is at each point. And so there's all sorts of automated ways to do that, but you can't do that on a test. And moreover, this is a, this. This class is sort of designed to help you figure it out and to sort of develop the thinking of what's going on in a program on your own without the need for debuggers and printf statements and stuff like that. So this is the brute force way of how to know what, when, uh, how to answer the test questions. Um, what does this program do? So I'm here in lesson 10. So I have lesson 10 and it's um, a very simple program. It has a while loop and a for loop. And so I want to sort of show how to do that. And I did it on the board with a table, but in this case, I'm just going to do it with Excel, make a table in Excel. Okay, so now I'm over here. And um, <clears throat> the first thing is going to be line number. And then I'm looking at all these variables. I need a variable for i, a variable for n, a sub i, um, and sum. That looks like all that I need there, right? For this program. So um, I'm going to start with the, uh, before line 25. There isn't really, before line 26, there really isn't anything. So I'm going to start with line 26, where i is uh, defined as 0. And I, ends undefined, so I don't know what that is. I don't know what a sub zero is. And sum doesn't have a definition either, right? So then 27 is while, while statement. So while in the while statement is the f scan f statement. So in line 27 is f scan f statement. Does i change? No. So that stays the same as the last one. Is, is n defined here? No. So I still don't know what that is. Sum, still don't know. But a sub zero is defined. Right, and that's going to be defined by this um, file in three. So in three has 3.0, 5.0, and 8.0 in it. Just this three, five, and eight thing. So the first value is going to be three, and then 28. In line 28, we increment i by one, so i becomes one. And still doesn't have a value. It's by still three hasn't changed. Sum is I don't know yet. So when you get to 29, 29 is a curly brace. You can either include 29 and say go back up to 28, but I don't include it because I, you know, I just need to go back to 27. So for control systems, for control structures like for loops and while loops and if states, statements, you're going to go back to, you're going to go to a different number. This is where you're going to move from uh, one line number to another number. You're going to, in this case, we're going to go back up to um, line 27 until the file is over. So we're gonna have to get three values, right? For, before before the file, uh, before EOF is reached. So I have to go back to 27. It hasn't changed because there's no change in I there. N is still in a fine. So now the second value of A sub I, A1 is gonna be five. So I'm still in a fine. Go to 28 again. And I'm gonna increment by one again. So that's there, so. Still don't know. Now this is um, this is still five. Still don't know. So back to 27 one more time. It's two, and now we pick up the eight. And then when I go to 27, 28 the third time, that means it's going to be three. Again, I++ only changes I, so it doesn't change any other variable, right? So you only change the variable that is changed in the in the line of code uh, written right here. Um, 
you only change it in the table if something if, the, if that line is doing something to that variable. So now we get to line 30, once we've gone through that loop three times. By the way, if you want to add another column and say which loop you're in, first round, second round, third round, I mean, you can do that too to sort of help familiarize yourself with this thing. But I can just see that you want first round, second round, third round for the while loop. And at the very end, I equals three. So I didn't change. So when we look at line 30, I doesn't change, but now n change. n has a value of three. There are three, there are three uh, numbers in the array A. Um, that hasn't changed, so a sub uh, i hasn't changed, but it's it's not really clear what sum and a are, what a is. So sometimes when you're looking at an array and it doesn't and, you, and it's and i is undefined or something like that, I would I might just go three, five, and eight like that and just give the different values in there. Something to, that's something you do now. It's not a number anymore, but who cares? This is just a table to show you what's going on. Then I close the file. So now I'm going to skip down to 35, line 35. So I still has a value of um, three, n has a value of three, um, a has three, five, and eight in it, and sum now has is defined. Sum's defined as zero. Um, so now I go in this for loop. So it's going to go um, 36, 37, 36, 37, 36, 37, three times, right? 36, right? So the for loop. So first, the first run through the for loop, I is set to zero, and it's still three. And doesn't change. A sub zero now is three, and sum is zero. So line thirty-seven. Um, the new value of sum, the i is still zero, and is still three. Um, a sub i is three, and so now sum. The new value of sum is the old value of sum plus a sub zero, which is three. So now it has a value of three. Then I, I hit 38, so that goes back up to 36. Now, with a for loop, you change i right at the top, because that's where the i++ plus plus happens. So now i has a value of 1, and is still 3. Now, a sub i is 5. And so, uh, and sum hasn't changed in line 36, so that's still 3. So for line 37, i is 1, and is still 3. A sub i is still 5, but now new value of sum is equal to the old value of sum plus 5, so that's 8. Okay, so that's the second time loop through, so it's now 36. You go back, now i equals equal to 2, and it's still equal to 3. Um, uh, and now a sub, a sub 2 is equal to 8. a sub 0 is 3, a sub 1 is 5, a sub 2 is 8. And so but in line 36, again, nothing's happened to sum, right? This is just part of the for loop, so that stays at 8. Then in the third time through, when you do line 37, i is still 2, and is still 3. Um, a, sub, a sub 2 is still 8. And so now the new value of sum is equal to old value of sum plus a sub i, 16. Then, so now, when I get to 38 and I go back up here, I would increment i to be equal to 3. And so now 3 is greater, is no longer less than 3, and so that means it would jump out. So when you're looking at a control structure, you can use this to say, ah, now it would jump out and go to the next uh, loop. So that's how, um, that's how you would use this table to know that you're jumping out, by looking at the value of i in this when you're analyzing on line 36. So the next time, if you're going to do 36, you know i is equal to 3, and so now you'd say jumps out of loop or something like that. Right? That's how you would do that. So if I add a printf statement here, and I want to print out the value of i, value of a sub i, the value of sum, right inside this loop, I can just read it off here. It's after line 37 each time. So the first time after line 37 each time, it should say i, I is 0, a sub i is 3, sum is 3. The second time it should read um, after line 37, i is 1, a sub i is 5, sum is 8. And the third time through, a is, i is 2, a sub i is 8, 
sum is 16. Let's see if that works. Zero three three one five eight two eight sixteen. Just as if we read it off this table, so that works. Cool, huh? So that's so um, that's lesson ten. Now I'm going to do um, the the if statement one from the quiz six. So that's coming next. Okay. So now um, here in Dev C, I have quiz six. So this is quiz six from the first section. So it's going to be slightly different if you're in the second, second section. Um, you'll see how I changed it from one section to the other, uh, but they're very similar. And again, I'm going to have this Excel spreadsheet. And so, but the, because this has a function in it, what does this do function? I'm going to have to have two different sheets. I'm going to go switch back from one sheet to another sheet here. <clears throat> so for the main, I've got the line number i my number i n a sub i e sub i out one out two okay Again, the action doesn't happen until 25, so let's start with line 25. It's a for loop, so I starts at zero. N, um, I don't know yet. Um, if I look at n6.txt, so let's go get that real quick. So three, six, seven, one, and five, four. That's in one dot txt. So I'm going to put that down here. So the first round, when I do f scan f, I'm going to get three and six there. Um, out one's not defined yet, and out two's not defined yet. Well, line 26, that was line 25, I'm sorry, the line 26 does that. 3, 6. And I 0, and we don't know yet. I don't, want, don't know yet. Okay. And then line 27, um, uh, String copy, so let's string copy. So line 27 is string copy, so that's going to change out one. Have in it file. Quotes, so the, the string file. Everything else is the same. Zero, no, three, six, no. 28. 28 is now what does this thing do? So now we're going to define what n is. So I have to, so this thing is going to give us what n is. This is still three, this is still six, this still says file. We don't have that yet. So we're gonna find out what n is. So in order to do that, I need to go to a new sheet, sheet two, and line number four. Um, what does this thing, what does this do, right? And so in that, there's a variable i, which is not the same as the, the i in the main, j, and um, x, and Y and M. So, so on line, so the first action here happens on line 43. So um, I is not defined yet. That happens in the next line on line 44. So in the for loop, it gets defined, but J is defined as zero. And X coming in and X, Y, and M coming in are the same as A, B, and I coming in. So if I go back, to sheet one and look at what the values of a, b, and i, three, six, and zero, right? So three, six, and zero, I'm in three, six, and zero, come in. So for line 44, 
Again, now I is defined as zero. Uh, J doesn't, hasn't changed. Uh, X hasn't changed. Uh, hasn't changed. M hasn't changed. So if this isn't thing is going to go M plus one. It's going to be less than M plus one. It's a zero. It's only going to go through once. That's what's going to happen in this for loop. So we're only going to do this for loop once on this round. So, um, um, so 45, if x sub 0, that's x is 3, let's listen, y sub 0, that's 6. So that's true. So 46, I'm going to say, is um, true. 45, the, 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 the statement, the question 45, the if statement, conditional statement there is true. x sub i, x sub 0, 3, is less than y sub 0, 6. So it's true. So that means do line 46. And for line 49, that else, uh, if else statements and all that stuff, I know, so, so this is NA. I'm not going to do that one. So I'm only going to do line 46. So I is still 0. J now, the new value of J is equal to the old value of J. The, so the new value of J is equal to the old value of J plus X, 3. And then when you get to line 50, the end of it, it jumps out. So line 52, it returns the value of J. So the value of J, the value of J here, goes to the left side of the equal sign up here in main into N. So the value 3 goes back into sheet 1 into main Three, good. And so the back up to so then I'm going to go back up here. <clears throat> um, and I'm going to go to line 29. Well, line 29, um, everything stays the same. Except now out two gets designed. So now I'm going to put the character three in that one. So I think I, in the in class I did it as quote file like that to to indicate that it's a string or a character. So then line thirty, all you're doing is concatenating the character three on the end of file. Right, so that means that this goes zero. This doesn't change. This doesn't change. This doesn't change. This now becomes file three, and this doesn't change. Thirty-one doesn't change. Doesn't change. Doesn't change. That doesn't change. The only so now thirty-one is just adding .tat to the end of that. So file three .tat. That didn't change. So now for line 32, it just prints this out. Right? That's the file 3.dat. Then it goes back up to the loop. So then I'm going to go back up to line 25. Now i is 1. Um, n is still 3. n hasn't changed. Now uh, 3 has, this hasn't changed, this hasn't changed. Uh, that has and that, those two hasn't changed. So now when you get to 26, it's one, um, and it's three. So, so now a sub, if I go back to here, a sub one is going to be seven, and uh, I mean a sub one is going to be seven, and b sub one is going to be one. So now I'm going to go seven one. It hasn't changed. Hasn't changed. Back to file because we just copied file back in, and again this is this is still the old value of three, it hasn't changed. So now I want to go to twenty eight. It's going to call it's going to call this. So I want to say that this is really three seven and this is really um, six one. I want to I want to put the values of this in there. Even though n is the value of one, I'm going to be sending um, uh, all of that 
the whole arrays into the function, right? So now I'm going to get in this function. And so now I'm going to rewrite all this stuff. I'm going to go click, 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 click. So now it's a brand new day for this. Um, so now it's a brand new day for um, uh, for the sheet two for the function. What does this do? So coming into this, now I have x. I have the values of a, b, and i going into x, y, and m respectively. So now this is three six, and this is seven one. And now m has a value of um, one. Because I, because right here when I'm calling it, I has a value of one, A has three and seven, and B has six and seven and one. Six and one, three, seven. Did I do that right? Three, seven. I did that wrong. Three, seven, and six, one. On line 43, J is set to zero. I is undefined, right? So we don't know what the value, internal value, and what does this do of I yet? So again, uh, 44 if. So, um, so the first round, so the first round, I'm doing 44. I is zero, right? That hasn't changed. That hasn't. None of that's changed. Okay. <clears throat> So now if, if x sub i, so that's 3, 3 is less than 6. Is 3 less than 6? So that statement is true. So do this one. So j is the j plus x sub i. x sub i is 3, so that's that. And this is not applicable. We didn't do that one. Right now, this is going to go through the loop twice. So, um, so then it goes back up to 44. I now has a value of one. Of J hasn't changed. Um, now A sub I is um, uh, seven, and B sub I X X sub I is seven, and B sub I is one, and M stays at one. So then I'm going to go to 45. It's seven and one. Therefore, this statement ends up being false. So 46, we're not going to do. And 49, we're going to do. So, so now 49, we're going to do. So J is equal to J plus Y sub I. Y sub I is one. So now that's four. And then, then it jumps out because I is equal to one for when it goes back up here and M is equal to one. So that's, and so once it increments up to two, this would be, go to two on the, on the next round. And then it would jump out because two is no longer less than M plus one, which is two. So that's how it would um, work. And so then it returns the value of J here on line 52. It returns the value of j, which is 4. And so that goes back into the thing on the left-hand side of the equation, n, here. And so that's 4. <clears throat> 29, 1, 4. Um, now I go back to uh, just 7, 7 and 1. Um, and this ends up being, uh, quote, File and then 29 because it's sprint F. Now we have it's equal to 4. And so 30 is the concatenation of that. So now it's file 4. And then 31, I add 
the Yeesh. So the first two things is going to be three and four. What this subroutine does is it takes the smaller of these two values, three, one, and it um, uh, um, um, and it adds them all together and comes up with the number that's going to go into the file name that's printed out. So three, four, and the last one's going to be eight. You can do you can do that last. You can do this round one more time and prove to yourself that it's going to add four to that last one, so it's going to make it eight. So when I run it, three four and eight. That's the output of this uh, program. Cool. One last um, program I'm going to show you that involves nested loops. So that's next. Okay. Um, last example for this brute force um, uh, strategy is um, we did it. I started in this class, which is in, in class, which was this swap algorithm. So we're just Instead of doing the whole alphabet, we're just doing five, uh, the first five characters here, uh, randomized, and then uh, they get all sorted. And so here we have this nested loop where I goes from zero to n minus one, and j goes from i plus one to n. And so, um, uh, um, so that's the, um, um, uh, that's this nested loop. And then if if um, a sub i is greater than alpha sub i is greater than alpha sub j, then you swap them. So I'm going to skip the actual swapping part and just talk about how the indexes move in this brute force strategy, where j moves faster than i. So in here, and I'm going to start at uh, line 23. Um, line 20, before line 23, it's just setting n equal to 5 and setting alpha equal to edcab, right? So if we go here and we say line number, and we say... Um, uh, alpha n i j so we if we start at line 23 alpha is equal to e e c a b n is equal to 5 so i starts at 0 and uh, j is not defined yet and we go to 24, um, that's the same, that's the same. And so um, <clears throat> um, J starts at one, so zero, one. And so I'm not gonna do, I'm just gonna say 26 um, and then dot, and then 29. So I'm skipping all those internal steps between 26 and 29. So it's just gonna do and so, um, um, so this isn't going to change anything. So that's going to be zero and one, zero and one. Then, um, once we get, once we do, um, once we do twenty six and twenty nine, it's going to go back and it's going to change J first. So we go back up to line twenty four. So zero, two. Um, and it does line twenty six. And 29 again. Right. And so um, so once it gets to the end of that point, it goes back up here. It's still J is equal to 2. 2 is still less than 5. And so it's still going to go. And so it's going to do 24 again. 0, 3, 26, da da. Do, if if it's true, swap them. I'm, I'm not doing any of the I'm not doing any of the functionality here by changing EDCAB. I'm just showing you how this in these two indices in a nested loop move. Okay, that's the point of what I'm trying to show you here. Oops. 
gets back to 29, gets back to this, in, um, uh, it's 30, not 29. Yeah, sorry, it's 30. The printf statement. So um, it gets down to 30, you get 31, goes back up this loop. It's going to increment to J is going to be 4. 4 is still less than 5. So we go back to 24. 0 is less than 4. 26. Dot, dot, dot. Do if it does it. And then so 0, 4, 0, 4. So now, when it gets when j is four and it gets back up here, j increments uh, j increments one more time. Then it's five. Then it's equal. It busts out. Then it goes back up to this loop here, and i increments. So then it goes back up to twenty three. So then i increments by one. i is one. J is still four because it hasn't gone to the next loop yet. So then when it goes to twenty four, i is one, and j restarts. I plus one. It starts at two. So then, it, so then um, uh, J is two, it gets to the bottom, gets to the end of here, it increments up, J goes to three. So it goes back to 24, I still one, it goes up to three. Um, uh, then it it does one it does this it does this thing for um, i equals i equals one and j equals three i equals one and j equals three then it goes back up j increments one more time to four it's still less than five and it's five so it still works so it goes twenty four back up here it's one four. Then it, when it hits here, it goes back up. J increments by one. Now it's five. Then it then it jumps out, goes to this uh, loop. Then so i is so i increments by one again. So it goes back up to twenty three, and now i is two, and j is still four. And then when it goes to twenty four, to it resets to i plus one. So that's to three. So it does twenty six, two three. And then line 30, 2, 3. And then so it, it goes to the end of this line after 30 for the first round. It increments j by 1. So now j goes to 4, 24, it's 2, 4. And it does line 26, and 26 through 30 again. Right. But then it gets down to here. Then it goes back up. J increments by one. Now it's um, now J is five. So it jumps out of that, jumps out of this loop, goes to there. So it goes back up to I, goes up to, back up to 23 again. And you increment J by one. I still four. So go to 24. Three. Um, J equals I plus one. So it, just, it it's reset to the same value of four. And then when it jumps out, of, so then it goes 3, 4, so then when it gets to the bottom here, it goes back up. J increments by 1 to 5. It's no longer less than 2. It jumps out, goes to this one. I, go, I jumps up to 4. 4 is no longer less than 4 plus 1. It jumps out of there. Then it completely jumps out. It jumps to line 34. Here. Okay. So I skipped a lot of stuff in this thing. I'm just showing you, I just wanted to show you how I and J move through this nested loop. For example, I didn't include lines 27 through 29 if the statement were true. So when you go through this exercise, you're going to have to 
put less than uh, 27 through 29 if it's swapping. And you're going to have to change the value of alpha each time if it swaps uh, I1 and I3. But I just wanted to show you that I starts at 0. I goes 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. As J goes 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I goes... Then I goes one 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 as I goes as J goes two three four, and then I is two 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 and this goes three four and then I is three and this just goes four, so that's the pattern of a nested loop. I goes slowly zero 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 one 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 two two three. I goes and J, I goes slow. Let me do it one more time. I go slow. Zero, 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 one, 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 two, two, three. When J goes fast, J goes one, two, three, four, two, three, four, three, four, four. That's how the nested loop structure works. So the, the main the main goal is to show you on a table how you would fill in a nested how a nested structure would look filled in the two indices i and j. Good. So I just wanted to go through that last thing, and that's that's the end. And so uh, you ought to be able to do this um, uh, this um, the table for this thing on your own.